Hey guys, welcome back to this place. And if you are new, then welcome here for the very first time. I am Carmen, and today we are watching season five, episode five of The Expanse. So I am a little bit stressed because of what happened last episode and the fact that this is the halfway point of the season. We have a lot of stuff going on, okay? We have Marco stealing, <laughs> kidnapping Naomi, although really it was Philip that did it, but she is stuck on Marco's ship now and I just worry for her because of her predicament. We have the robot thing just literally walking away with the proto molecule. We have Holden in that whole situation. Fred Johnson is dead. Uh, Earth has been impacted multiple times, including close to where Amos is, which is in a penitentiary, surrounded by a lot of people with mods and just, you know, he's unsafe. We have Alex and Bobby doing their thing on the screaming Firehawk and they are going after the people they think are selling the weapons uh, to the belt. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there's more that I'm just not thinking of at the present time. So yeah. I'm stressed, but I am ready to get right into it. Oh, quickly before I do, some of my sound stuff fell off the wall over there. So if the sound is a little bit weird this episode, I'm sorry. I am going to try to get it fixed. Well, I mean, I definitely will get it fixed by the next episode, but hopefully it's not perceivable. It's literally like two panels. So we'll see. Now we've got that out of the way. Let's just get right into the episode. Oh shit. We're going back to Kamina. I'm curious as to how she's gonna react to all of this. If it hadn't been Marco, it would have been someone else. It wasn't someone else, it was him. And I'm the one who had him in an airlock and let him go. That is hindsight. You cannot live backward. Right now it's difficult to move forward. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Oh. Oh, oh, hell, hell no. Maybe it was inevitable. Fred Johnson didn't believe that. I heard he was a good man. So she did. Why not that? So they know he was dead. He was a good man, period. Marco Anaros has asked us to meet. What are we going to do? We will accept. Um, Carl. You're stressing me out. You're stressing me out. Oh God. Okay, okay, we're with Amos. Oh hell, okay. Oh shit, that place. Okay. That's not great. Get up, get up, get up. Hun, get up. I, I, I don't think that you wanna, okay. Are you all right? So far, open the door. Where you must have buckled. I'm gonna go find help. Fuck that! There's already cracks in the foundation. This place can come crashing down any minute. Just pull. Peaches, let's go. You're not going anywhere. Wrong. We're in lockdown. Inmates remain in place until we hear from upstairs. Until? You still haven't heard anything. No, not yet. That means you're that you're not going for my to. my safety. I am making myself responsible for hers. And every minute that we spend talking is another minute that we could be getting the fuck out of here. Fuck. Go. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Is there another set of stairs? It's a maximum security prison. They didn't design it with a lot of escape routes. There should be a maintenance ladder in the elevator shaft. Good idea. You might not have a choice. Laura, I got a bad idea. What? <gasps> no, that is a bad idea. So? What's new? <laughs> what does this guy end for? Do we know? That's too bad. No elevator, no ladder, I'm guessing. 
not some rock hopper scraping by. You had a good life here. Working on a Urta station for an Urta. You think that's what Belter Lord of Wong came? Fred Johnson was a friend to all Belters. He was a tourist. Go home in your Lada. If you don't, the bell will remind you that you don't belong here. Time to take the Rossi out for a hunt. Monica's eye captured this Amir's flight plan. Wait. See you when you get back. That's not what she was gonna say. We'd have to get Tani up there and have him pry the doors open. Would you call me? Maybe we could find something that could stick to the walls, like suction cups or something. Who's behind these? Do I look like an elevator repairman? I need you to sink one here and here. Tiny, come here. You should stop calling me that. See if you can pull this open. <laughs> Amos just antagonizing this guy. We got Tiny, we got three guns to make holes. One of you guys go up with him, make the holes, he opens the panels, and then we get the fuck out of here. Would they not run out of bullets? I really would like these people to stop touching my girl. Like, I'm not okay with this. I'd rather go back to my cell. Well, I'm not a prisoner. But yes, she is. She can't leave. To go wherever you wish. And I'll go back to my ship and leave. That is what you do best. I heard that the Chetsamoka isn't your ship. You gave it to Philip. Do you want to give her your ship? No. So, prisoner. There's no need to play with her like that. I like that guy. He's the only decent person on this whole fucking ship. Got angry with me. Oh, you catch on quick, kid. <coughs> Disappointed. You have every right to be angry with your mother. I don't, you know. I don't think that's why he took be her. sad about what she did to you, what she did to all of us. Don't put yourself into it, dude. You let Marco poison your heart and Philip's, and I will never forgive you for that. We had to do it! The Innes will never share the bounty from the new worst. Marco is trying to build something for all the children of the belt. And he's building it on a river of blood. With your help. Yeah, I think you have to look at the, the whole thing, dude. Sally! Connor, check it the fuck down here or I will open fire. You fell off. I said get your ass down here. No, you come up. Go with her. One of you makes the holes, the other one covers. Hurry. <laughs> Hurry. Oh my god. It's daylight. We're almost there. How can that be daylight? It's all building up there. Not anymore. Thinking of your Urta? King's Odin. She was. So what? She's in love. Famous for drinking coffee and saving the system with his crew of Urters, Martians, and Belters. You think he's coming to save you now? He would if he knew she was there. The Gamara Code. You still feel bad about that ship? Yeah, of course she does. She has a heart. And I thought we would be refreshing your memory. No one is coming to save you. After what you did to Marco, he will never let you go. He doesn't get to decide that. Neither do you. Because Kamina is going to meet as well. And if she finds out, she's not going to be okay with this. She is devising a plan. Oh, God. Is she going to just try to stab Marco, like, outright? Girl, I love you, but I don't, I don't know that this is the best plan. Marco! need to speak with you. Not now. Girl, 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 girl. 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 You are busy. And you have no business here. He saw. Didn't he? He saw. You should be grateful to me for taking you. You saved my life. He did, I think. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, okay. <sighs> okay, it was, yeah, it definitely. 
It definitely hit. I'm guessing a lot of shit's gone. It's gone. Yeah. It must have been one hell of a rock. Yeah. Let him go! I mean, he's already done. <gasps> Amos! Call me tiny! He must, hun, he has a mod. Call me tiny. Clarissa, Melba, whatever. Come on, girl. Oh, shit. Oh. Amos just fucking threw him in there. What do we do now? That is a good question. We gotta get out of here. Yeah. Isn't that place like surrounded by water? Tell me something. Girl. Did Marco slip the Augustine Gamara code into the Rossi? <laughs> oh my god. 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 Hurry. No, no. Oh my god. Hurry. 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 Just answer. Please just answer. Please just answer. Please just answer. Holy shit. Fucking do not stop the first drive. The reactor codes been sabotaged. It will blow if you do. I repeat, do not sabotage. I've been held captive by Marco. I'm shutting down the reactor. Yes, yes, shut it down. Shut it down. How the hell do you know that? Where is she? There's no location data. You're gonna get your girl, right? They didn't try to, he's okay. That's why that girl said, I'll see you when you get, she almost said something. Oh, that fucking girl. Looks like the bar keeps moving out. Must have transferred the weapons already. Hard burn away from the sun. The escorts aren't moving. Why? Do they know y'all are there? Frigates are the weapons, that's the deal. His belt is on our Martian ships. They pinged us. Shit. Time to go. Fly, 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 fly away. Can we outrun it? Uh, it's about their crew. I think we can hold a hard burn longer. But they know that too. Fuck. We got a fast mover. All right. I'm trying to break its lock. Hang tight. They okay? Please do not end the episode there. Please do not end the episode. <sighs> I said please. I said please. Ah. <sighs> I gotta calm down for a second, you guys. All right, so that was a freaking episode. I love how this show just never stops surprising me and stressing me out and just making me so invested in the story. I love how it surprises me, yet when I look back, it was obvious what it's surprising me about, if that makes sense. I love when a show or a story in general can do that with the foreshadowing. They will leave you little hints of what is coming 
without actually telling you. And so when it happens, you're like, oh my gosh, yes, of course that's what was going to happen. But you didn't necessarily see it at the time. Now, <laughs> what I'm referring to in this episode, which you probably know, but is the Naomi, the Naomi Nagata, Naomi understanding what they were talking about when they were referring to the Augustine, Augustine Gamara. You know, I, I don't remember exactly <laughs> what the ship is called, but that lady who doesn't like Naomi saying to Naomi that they were going to remind her of the Augustine whatever, the Gemara, right? The, they were gonna remind her of, of what that felt like versus Naomi saying that she already knew what that guilt felt like. That to me is, it's just such clear foreshadowing. And Naomi didn't even realize that that lady that was working on the Rosinante was part of Marco's crew. Like we know that she was part of, of his whole conspiracy. I don't think that she knows about Fred Johnson. I don't think that they've been telling her this kind of info. So maybe they, maybe they told her about Fred Johnson, actually. I don't know. We didn't see her discover that. We saw her discover about Earth and all of that stuff. But without that information, she still understood what that lady was referring to and she was able to stop it. Of course, <sighs> Naomi doesn't know that she was able to stop it. And so she is she's really upset right now and I would be if I was her too she thinks maybe Holden is dead she thinks you know she doesn't know if Alex is still there she doesn't know if Amos came back you know Alex and Amos she doesn't know if they came back and maybe Holden and them were going somewhere on the Rosinante like she doesn't know so she's operating from a place of maybe she just lost every single person that she loves, her actual family. And that just it breaks my heart for her. I hope that she that she can find out soon that it, it didn't succeed. Yeah, I don't know. I I love the the foreshadowing of that though. And it just it all plays so well into itself, I guess, because there was also the girl with the ball hair, I still don't know her name, but she almost said something when they said that they were going on the Rossi, Rosinante. How do I? Rosinante? I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I don't know. I've said it so much now that I can't remember how to say it, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But yeah, she almost faltered and then she was like, oh, I'll see you when you get back, which should have been a clue, I guess, because she was working on the ship, you know. I'm not sure, I'm not sure why it didn't occur to me or them that the mechanic on board the ship might have done some shit to the ship. But I guess she was working with Naomi most of the time. But once Naomi left, she was like by herself. I don't know. To go off of, of that moment, we saw Holden knows now that Naomi is being held captive by Marco, even though he claims that she's not a prisoner. But like, if you literally cannot leave the place that you are and you're not allowed to go somewhere else, you're a prisoner. You're a prisoner. You're a pri like, just stop trying to play the good guy role like she's a prisoner. Stop lying. We all know that she's a prisoner. Anyway, Holden now knows this as well. And so I have hope that he is somehow going to try to find Naomi. They can get whatever that is off of 
the Rosinante, and then they can go after the, what is it called? Hold on, I think I wrote it down in the last episode. Zamea, Zamaya, that, that ship that they were gonna go after. And then that ship is going to Marco because it has the proto-molecule, I would assume. And so, you know, do, 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 A, B, C, that way. Hopefully, we'll see. I don't think that Philip will let Marco kill Naomi. I don't think he will. I I don't know how much control he actually has over Marco, but I don't think that he would be okay with that occurring, right? We saw in this episode that Philip actually saw what Naomi was about to do to Marco, that she was gonna stab him and he saved Marco in a way, but really what he did was save Naomi because I don't think that she was gonna get out of that ship alive if she had done that in such a public way. Like there's no way that she would have made it off that ship alive. And if she had failed, Marco would have probably killed her. So I think that was really interesting. And I, I don't know, I, Philip is growing on me a bit because of that and because of the scene with him and Marco after he was being a dick to Naomi and basically flaunting that she's a prisoner by claiming she's not a prisoner in front of her. The scene with Marco and Philip after that, I found really interesting. And the reason I found it interesting is because it, presented me a little bit more of their dynamic that I haven't seen before. And what's really interesting to me about their dynamic that I don't think I really considered before, which is kind of stupid of me, is that Philip is an abused child, you know? He, I'm not gonna say that Marco ever physically hurt him. I don't know, there's not been enough evidence to really suggests that, but he has been raised by somebody like Marco, who I think is not, I don't know that he has any diagnosable disorder, like narcissistic personality disorder or something like that. But I think that Marco is a very fucked up person who has a very mm, iffy worldview. And I think that, I think that growing up as his son, would be very dangerous and would be very scary. And I'm not sure that Philip really had a lot of choice in a lot of the things that he's done thus far to gain Marco's approval. I don't know that he necessarily is, I mean, he's still a child in a way, right? So I don't know that he's, I mean, his brain is definitely not fully developed he's not, I don't think that I'm explaining this properly, but that scene or those scenes really just opened up my perspective on Philip and what he's gone through. And I don't agree with a lot of the stuff that he has done. He is a party to killing at least 2 million people. That's not something that can be easily overlooked or written off. However, I do think that to not take into account the trauma that he has suffered being Marco's son would be unfair to his character and would not, would not be giving him the same sort of courtesy that I give to Amos or other characters who have been shown to have very traumatic pasts. And I do think that though we don't know a lot of what it is that Philip's past is traumatic. Just the idea of having Marco as your father, the kind of person that Marco is, the kind of ideals and beliefs that he possesses and what he's willing to do to get what he wants. I think he's very dangerous. And I think that as a father, he he's probably not the best. Did that rambling really make sense? You tell me. <laughs> To continue on of the, the Marco, Naomi, Philip 
route. I also find Naomi's relationship with the older guy, whose name I also do not know, but I find it very interesting because I feel like he's almost, like he seems like a good person and yet he thinks that what they did was necessary. He thinks that killing two million people is an acceptable casualty count for the war that they're raging. And I just, I find it hard to try to agree with somebody who would think that way because I just don't agree with mass murder, like I said in the last episode. And I just think that something like that can't be excused. And in, in my opinion, that's just the way that I feel about it. Also, I can't remember if I said it before, but I wanted to say that Naomi is actually really smart. I was not giving her proper credit in this episode because she was acting on impulse, but she also put together two and two and realized what Marco was planning for the Rosinante and was able to stop it. So like kudos to you girl, I am hella proud. <laughs> also, the last thing that I really wanna say regarding Marco is that he sent an invitation to Kamina's little group of Belter ships to join him. <sighs> One, do I trust that the invitation is genuine? I don't know. Two, I am worried because I don't think that Kamina, <sighs> I worry for Kamina's motivations and accepting the invitation, right? I, I think that she is planning on trying to take out Marco and her accepting this invitation is her way to get close enough to do that. And while I am all for this plan, I am also very worried about my girl Kamina and I don't want her to become another casualty in Marco's war, so. Stressed, we are stressed, we. I am stressed. You, all, you guys already know what's gonna happen, so. You're probably not stressed, but I am stressed. <laughs> We also in this episode went back to my boy Amos and we saw that he was, a lot more stuff had happened to the penitentiary than the last time that we saw it. It was a lot of rubble. <laughs> it was caving in. It was, you know, not good stuff was happening. And so Amos was able to negotiate with the guards really and find a way to get out. And <laughs> in the course of this, they used the the giant bald guy with the mods to help them because he had the strength mod and they needed that to get to the elevator shaft so they could get up and get out because the steps stairs were caved in, right? And so Amos <laughs> being Amos decided to call the big guy tiny because you know why not that is often a nickname for larger people and <laughs> it just i just love that amos antagonized the hell out of this guy and like it was kind of stupid right because the guy does have a mod and amos does not and as we saw at the end it could have been really bad for amos but i just love that his personality is that he is just going to be himself no matter who he's around. He doesn't he doesn't give a shit. He's just going to be Amos and I, you gotta love him for it. I also adore that he still calls Amelba Peaches and I do understand why he calls her that. Someone told me in the comments many, many episodes ago that Amelba is a kind of peach and I know her name is Clarissa, but she was Melba for so long. Like I still feel tempted to call her Melba. You know what I mean? Where was I going with that story? Oh yeah. They found a way to escape, long story short, and Tiny started going crazy. I think that he did probably throw Sully in hindsight. I, I thought he did at the time, possibly, but I definitely think he did now. And he killed the other guard guy. He tried to kill Amos. And luckily that other lady used the dead guard's gun 
to shoot him and then Amos just backflipped him into the hole and made him fall like he died I think he died I it's a safe bet that he he is he's no longer with us and honestly don't know what his crimes were but probably involved murder so I'm okay with it <laughs> anyway all of that rambling is to say that Amos and Clarissa are going I don't know what they're gonna do I assume that they're gonna tr like just leave earth because I don't know that Amos has any more unfinished business there I don't think that he has a reason to stay and I would like to see him join back up with Holden and everybody and well it's literally just Holden right now but yeah I would like to see him back in space because I, I want him to interact with, with other characters that I love again. <laughs> like like Christian or Holden or Naomi, you know. That is what I desire. <laughs> also, can I just say that the earth is in such disarray because of all of the rocks falling and you know, just shit going crazy, 2 million people dead, more to come. That's just the numbers that they know about right now. As I suspected, the penitentiary is not really the first on anybody's radar. And so hopefully none of the other prisoners can find a way to get out of their cells and up. Because that might be bad if they're like tiny in any way, which they probably are. Also Holden has not heard from his family speaking of things happening on earth and I worried about that. I don't remember if I talked about it but I worried about that in the last episode and so I hope that they are all okay. They showed us that cute happy family moment in the beginning of the season. <sighs> or was it the last season? I can't remember but I'm stressed about it okay. I'm just stressed about everything, as you guys know, always. <laughs> and I'm, I'm almost done, you guys. The last thing that I wanna say is about Alex and Bobby. So they followed the, the ships that they were gonna follow, right? And they found them making a trade with Belters and they figured out that what's happening is that the, what they're trading is the frigates. And so, that's not great. And also what is really not great is that one of them saw them and they had to do their best to get away, but they don't have any weapons on the Screaming Firehawk. And so they shot a missile at them and they had to drop the core, I think, in order to the core drive, something like that, in order to try to get away. Now, I'm stressed because one, are they stranded? Two, are they okay? Three, they ended the episode right there. So <laughs> I have no answers. I have only questions as usual. <laughs> I, you would think that like it's season five, I would be used to the cliffhangers by now, right? But no, I'm not. Like, okay, I'm used to them, but I, it still stresses, I, I, I still get real frustrated with them, you guys, especially because I try to watch these episodes. I give myself a few days in between so I can marinate, think about, try to maybe figure out something that I might've missed in the previous episode. And this just really makes me want to watch the next one right freaking now. Like, I just want to be like, mm, you know what? Just casually press play and watch it because this show is so good. You guys, this is literally already one of my favorite shows that I've ever watched. Like I have a few, like there's a lot of shows that I love so much, but there are a few shows that are like way up there for me personally. Just that I love, you know, and I will rewatch a bunch of times and I can, this is gonna be one of those shows. This is like, it's just, it's just, it's just so good. It's just so good. It's just so good. Like I cannot wait to read the books because the show is so good. 
And I know that the books are a little bit different from what people have told me, but I am really excited. Like I want to know everything about James Holden. I want to know everything about Amos Burton. I want to know everything about Naomi Nagata and Alex Kamal and Bobby Draper and Christian Avasarala. And you know, I just, I want to know every single thing that exists to know about these characters because I love them so much and I'm so stressed that something is going to happen to them. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I have rambled at you guys for long enough. Thank you for listening. If you watched this far, bless you. I am sorry. I don't know how you got through it. Um, as always, if you want, you can like comment and subscribe. Let me know what you thought about the episode no spoilers, please. We are almost there. So you only just, you only have to hold on to it for a little bit longer and then we can fangirl. <laughs> if you want to watch the next episode right now, you can over on Patreon. And I hope in the next couple weeks, I will have full length available there as well. So stay tuned. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great weekend, a great week a great night or day whenever you're watching this and you're awesome. Stay awesome until next time. Bye guys.